All right. Hey guys, um, wanted to go through and do some exam prep for you. Um, this is not about content. We'll get to that tomorrow um, when we do the live chat on Unit 6. Um, and obviously I'll be focusing more on what College Board, I don't know how helpful it'll be for your exam that you have coming up. And then next Monday or Tuesday, I'll do one for the entire kind of class as we get ready for Thursday's exam. So you got eight days. Hopefully you're somewhat ready and not completely panicking yet. Uh, if you haven't yet, I would first and foremost say to go out and get some kind of review book. It can be uh, any of them. They're all really good. Baron, I know, is a good one. Um, ask the juniors who took the course last year if you they have good recommendations or shoot. Ask if you can take theirs or borrow theirs or buy theirs. Um, but the important thing is try to finding some review materials and go through and find ways to find some of those practice exams. Um, get a five. I know a couple of students have said they've been able to use it and it's been very helpful. I think it helps take the practice exam and the diagnostic test on there. Um, if not, go through and find these review books, take the practice exams and really work at least certainly with the multiple choice so you can see what some of those questions look like. Uh, we'll break this into two parts, uh, multiple choice I'll talk about first and then the essays. Uh, multiple choice, it's 70 questions in 55 minutes, so obviously that's, that's more than a question a minute you're going to have to go through and do. Um, it's important certainly that you go through and answer the questions you know. If there's going to be stuff on there that you don't remember that we didn't cover, um, whether it be from units one through four or five through six, um, regardless of the teacher, they always throw some things on there that you're going to look at and say, I had no idea that, that, about this. Um, especially they like throwing stuff about Oceania and, and Islanders that we don't really cover um, with the Pacific. Anyway, if you don't know the answer or you don't understand the question, skip it. That's the most important thing. Again, you have 55 minutes. It goes quick. Please, please, please don't sit there and try to work through every single problem in order. Um, that's how most people get tripped up is they try to go through and tackle this one through 70 and they only get to 45 or 50. And that's automatically 20 questions or plus that you're going to not get credit for and it's going to count against you. So go through, answer the ones you know. Use the systems that we worked when we did the questions of the day. Trying to work backwards if you can eliminate the two. At least you, that way you're at a 50-50. Uh, again, the questions are not so much about who, what, where, and when. There will certainly be some of those, but a lot of it's more about contextualization, what's the context of these events in history, when you put them in certain um, periods of time, how do they compare with others, um, you know, please make sure that you go through and underline or mark when it says and accept or not, uh, and you have to find the correct answer rather than, um, or you're finding the one incorrect answer rather than the three. Uh, you guys know what I mean, I can't talk this morning. Um, but that's really important to go through. It's also when you're reviewing, remember only 5% uh, of the test is going to be from unit one. So that's maybe three questions. You probably aren't gonna have any essays on unit one. So I don't study that time period too much. The breakdown of how the questions work is on my website. Hopefully you all are still using that. There's still all the resources. I haven't taken anything down. So you can go through that and other links that I posted on Twitter um, are very, very helpful. Uh, on to the essays. You'll get, after you do the multiple choice, you get a 10 minute, five to 10 minute break um, to relax and, and kind of readjust and get ready for the essays. How it'll work is you're going to get a packet with all three essays and you'll have two hours and 10 minutes basically to write it. Um, it'll break down. You get 10 minutes for the DBQ to kind of read those documents, which I know is not really realistic to be able to go through and, and do. Um, and then they expect you to kind of write 40 minutes for the three essays. Uh, there are lots of different ways you can tackle the essays. Certainly, uh, probably the, the easiest one is if you go through and one of the three jumps out and you say, I know this material, then start with it. Um, whether it's the DBQ, the CCOT, or the comparative, it doesn't really matter. Go with what you know. Um, if all three are kind of iffy, I, I'd certainly say start with the DBQ uh, because that doesn't take a whole lot of historical knowledge and background. It's more um, your historical thinking skills and analytics. You know, can you break down the documents? Can you put them together? Uh, it's really, 
I would go through and look and Google, um, just type in AP World History essay questions and you can find them online. The AP releases them. You'll be able to go through and, and see what the last 12 years of DBQ, CCOTs, and, and comparative essay topics are so you can kind of get a feel for what to expect. The DBQ, I'll warn you, are almost always kind of random and obscure topics. Uh, last year's was how disease impacted World War I. Uh, they've had one on cricket and its influence uh, in the British Empire and more importantly in India and Pakistan as it became in, they became independent nations. Um, they've had one on Chinese communism and how it affected the peasants. Again, kind of obscure topics, but I think they do that on purpose because you don't necessarily need the background for them. Again, it's much more about how you break down the documents, how you can put them together and build an essay from it. With the DBQ, certainly I'd go through, um, make sure you have a strong thesis, uh, uh, use the templates that we worked on in class, um, try to put the missing voice in the introduction. You don't have to, obviously, but again, it helps that way you don't forget as you kind of maybe rush toward the end um, and make sure the missing voice, try your best to tie that into the documents itself. Um, find a, something that you read a document and you say, hey, it'd be great if I heard from this. Um, again, it doesn't have to be, when we say missing voice, it doesn't have to be um, somebody random or unobjected or unbiased rather. Um, it can be somebody who absolutely would be biased. Um, but explain how their voice would help better understand the documents um, and give more to you know, kind of the, the entire picture that they're creating there. Um, remember you need to have three, you have to use all the documents. Um, so, and you have to label the documents. If you just go through, you don't write doc one, two, two, three, four. Um, and they'll probably, the, the standards usually been about seven or eight. Um, if you don't label them all, you don't get credit. So please make sure you do that. Uh, and, and do point of view. Again, point of view isn't necessarily, um, why, I mean, certainly the easiest way to do point of view is, is why the speaker is offering this point of view um, and what kind of things have motivated them to do that. But it can also be, uh, is this person biased and why are they biased um, toward whatever the topic is that they're talking about? Um, give a little bit of insight in their background. That's probably the easiest. What's the context of the speaker and that forces him to say what or she to say what it is they're saying. Um, and, and remember, you have to do that three times. The easiest way to do it is do one for each paragraph if you can. Um, if you do more, great. Um, you can get that's where you can get some of those bonus points. Um, but I think the DBQ is certainly if you do it well, and hopefully you guys have continued to do document analysis like we did a lot. I know it was boring, but hopefully it'll help as you move forward um, because the document is kind of the place where you can really get those, you know, five, sixes, sevens, and that's going to be a huge for your essay count portion of this to get you that twelve, which is kind of that magic number. Um, to get a three or above, if you can get to 12 and above, and, you know, and that's again, four per essay. And if you can do better on the DBQ, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room on the CCOTs or comparatives. Um, the CCOTs and comparatives, again, you're gonna need to have three total topics. Um, so for the CCOT, it's two changes and one continuity or two continuities and one change. For the comparatives, two similarities, one difference, one, dim one difference, or I'm sorry, two differences, one similarity. Uh, you're going to have to have at least two facts for each of those kind of paragraphs to back up that information. So two reasons why this similarity between these two nations or empires or trading situations, why are they similar? Um, what are two aspects of the one similarity? Yeah, you're going to have to hit on that. Um, and two reasons why the difference makes is important, etc. Um, they're, they're looking for kind of six is usually that magic number, six facts that you're throwing in there. So I guess an example, last year, uh, the CCOT was on labor systems. So if you were going through and explaining how the encomienda and hacienda and, and Atlantic slave trade had changed in Latin America, you could go through and talk about how natives were used to 
uh, the encomienda system. You could talk about how what it was like for the Incas when they first started. That was the encomienda, how the Spanish came in and continued that, um, especially with the silver mines. There's two instances for how things um, continued, and then you can go through and explain now the changes. Um, the natives died, and so they had to bring in African slaves uh, and the rise of the plantations, etc. So there's one or a couple of your changes.